Roberta and Peppermint, we are already, the last time we were all three together on Civic Rivalry, it was around the time of the election, right? Oh my I don't gosh. remember. Could that be true? No, it was. It was like 20. I no, like I've been on they, here since no, because the election. One. No, the I was still at, was, I was still in New York. I was still in no, New York when we did our last episode. Yes, wait, I recorded. But on the I wasn't. Machine. In, but I was in New York too. Last you time were both we did in a New York. Together. If it was around the election, yeah. Bob moved. Yeah, and I was. No, I, I was in. I was in LA for the election. Yeah, you were in LA for the election. Oh. Because remember, because then I and I and I took my wand, my J.K. Rowling wand, and I. Snapped oh, I remember it live that. I remember yeah. that. Ooh. Yeah. And I was wearing. <laughs> we not J.K.ing Miss Rowling. Um, oh, Pep, I always love your background. Your background always feels so ethereal, like you're in like some like <laughs> <laughs> like you she's are. in heaven. She's floating in heaven. <laughs> I am. I died. I died. Our angel in heaven. Honey, I'm dead. I am dead. <laughs> I came back for the podcast. <laughs> Pep, I have a question. Do you get into like? Do you feel? Do you keep up with like the Gen Only Z fans? lingo? <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, well, you you kick in, but after what you wore to uh, Queer Black Night on Broadway, Miss Thing, you turn Twitter upside down. You turn Instagram so into OF, honey. I'm and I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna say I'm not necessarily mad. I'm mad, but I'm also not mad at Instagram slash Facebook, who owns Instagram, because that top I wore is something I bought on Instagram. I saw it. It was like, girl. Oh. Oh. And then I was like, "All right, click," and I bought okay, it. Okay, now and I love it. Did it show up? Did it? Did it look like what the pictures were? You know, I bought stuff on Instagram that it does not. Girl, how it they was like they, Instagram they is the new anything. wish. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Girl, I um, wish I didn't did buy look, that shit. It did look like it, but I, I did have to get it. Um, like I, I had to take my clo- take it to get uh, altered. Which is normal. Okay. Like, Taken out. in, if you will. No. <laughs> well, I will say this. The thing, well, the thing about like, Instagram actually better is that Instagram has independent merchants. So a lot of the yeah. ordering from Instagram is mm-hmm. actually like actual like people. Yeah. So you can, Mindy you can buy from like yeah, you can buy from like small businesses and people, but yeah. some of those small businesses, some of those are not real are, businesses. Like, these, yeah, maybe sending you crazy stuff. But I've gotten some really, really cool stuff from Instagram as well. I have too. Sure. Oh God. Instagram is the new, it's the new wish, and it's also the new Amazon. Yes, I do keep up with the No, I don't keep up with what these kids are saying. What am I saying? Yes. <laughs> well, do you I know, don't. There's, a, there's, there's a picture in my bathroom uh that I got off Instagram and it just said <laughs> it just says it's just like a like a it's like words typography or whatever, and it just says I have to disagree with Michelle. And it is one of my favorite things in my... <laughs> what is that? Who, wh- wh- where's Michelle Visage. No, I know, I know. But like a, a, a drag race creator did that? Like, I don't I don't know who made it. Honey, I just saw it and I was like, people this in is so Taiwan funny. are quick, honey. But but I, they will put a quote on a shirt. I love that saying. I, ha- I have to disagree with Michelle. Finished. You know, can I tell you the amount of times I've gone to or like one of my stand-up shows or whatever and fans come with my merch... I'm like, bitch, I don't I don't make that shirt. Ass thing. I don't make I don't make that sponge. I don't make that that holy that that, that angelic white. And they'll be like, I, I Monet, I got your shirt. I'm like, bitch, if you're gonna get it from my website, I didn't make that. I did not make why, that. why you sound like Monique in at the end of uh precious? Since you got your fucking shirt, you fucking know everything. <laughs> who, 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 who's gonna shop on my site? Mm. Girl, it happens all the time. And then sometimes it'd be really cute, and I'm like, Damn, I should have. Damn. Damn. I know. He be like, you can be like, you can be like, uh, cease, don't desist. Send me the shirt. <laughs> cease to sell, but don't desist. The, uh, give it to me, bitch. Wait, what is okay, Cease, oh, wait, wait. Okay. Cease means stop. What does desist mean? Desist cease means, means, cease means stop. Desist yeah. means um, making more. Is that what desist means? Mm-hmm. Oh. No, it doesn't. Money, it money. <laughs> Well, they just made it. <laughs> I couldn't even and cease and desist means to, it stop really and means stop. stop, stop and stop, but stop and don't do it again. Like stop what you're doing now. Like pause. If, if oh, you really, it means it's abstain. probably like pause and abstain. Yeah, like which so means cease don't means do it in the future. And desist means abstain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, oh, but also when you look up the definition of desist, it says cease. <laughs> <laughs> like it says okay me, me and Monet are constantly showing that we do not know what any words mean on this podcast like that that is 
We, 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 me and Monet have made up words. We and you we, and I, you and I, of all, we, we should definitely know what cease and desist means because we, we have, we've had hello, to, honey. Uh, oh, I know y'all have received a few letters <laughs> or sent a few. <laughs> Probably received a few. Ah, Pat, did you see that Dylan O'Brien um, loved your outfit? Who's Dylan O'Brien? Wait, is Dylan a Pep? <laughs> what? Uh, what is going this, on? Uh, what? This is your chance to read Dylan. Dylan. He's from that show. This, this, it um, is what it is. What outfit? Uh, uh, he has that movie. My yeah, outfit? Uh, no, Ooh. Dylan O'Brien. He, ha- he ha- Dylan O'Brien has that movie. Um, 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 it, um it, it, oh out. shit. From, um, <laughs> from that, sh- um, from not okay. What's the name of it? <laughs> is it good? Is it not okay? Not okay. Is that the name of it? You bitches, you trapped me. Yeah, he was what? in the he was what? in the he was in the I'll hit Whitney Houston song. It's not right, but it's okay. He's the one. No, that's he's the one where she not goes making a. That. Oh my god! Wait a minute! Oh my god! Wow. Wait, 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 you got Pep would not me, know Dylan O'Brien if he walked up and drop kicked her in the left titty. <laughs> She'd be like, "Who is this stranger who just kicked me? This complete, this complete non-famous stranger." <laughs> oh my God, Dylan O'Brien! I love him. Monet, bitch, you didn't know who he was either, bitch. So shut up, bitch. <laughs> I try, I, okay, so now Pep and I are together, Simpson. So we were, so we were on this red carpet for the VMAs. And they and they the team at Paramount, which we're friends with Joe Gerbino, Gerbino and them, and they're like, "Don't worry, you guys will have an earpiece. And there's someone that you don't know. We'll let you know." But these faulty earpieces from 1972, <laughs> they were snap, crackle, and pop, and we could not hear what was going. It was too so loud. Like, yeah, they're like, "It's clear on time," and we're like, mm, mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "We couldn't hear." So that's why we fucked up. And to be clear, he's he's Teen Wolf, right? Yeah, he's yeah, on, yeah, but he's, he's really the Wolf, maze the runner. Show. Oh, that's what I know runner? him from. Yeah, when so he was I'm a little up, younger, maybe? obviously that was like ten years ago. Um, the maze, maze runner, runner Teen the Wolf, the uh, uh, not okay is the movie. not okay. That's not that movie, okay. and I had it right, but it had just dropped. Girl, it had just dropped. Like nobody knew. Oh God! <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! We subject. Had- we all had so much fun at the VMA. So we, we like, but I will say, so we're the Bob Pepper and I were all at the VMA sitting down watching the show. And I genuinely thought they were going to have us up there with Saucy Grr. and Taylor. Bitch, they had us with the most obstructed. <laughs> so we were, don't. okay, so we were. Don't, Monet, we, don't. No, I'm going to, no, on, on, on this podcast, we say the truth. So me oh, and Monet shit. were in, me, Monet, and Pep, we were in the reality TV section. It was me, yeah. Pep, Monet, Carrie, Kobe, um, uh, 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 the, the host from Catfish, the, the host, Cammy both Crawford, the host of Catfish, were all, all somebody's the, agent. Reality, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the reality TV people were all. So when we when you go to the VMAs, there are three stages. There's so let's say the best seat in the house. If you have the best seat in the house, there's a stage there, there's a stage there, and there's a stage there. Now yeah. if you have like a kind of crummy seat, there's a stage here. Here and there, because you're next to stage, bitch. We were behind, literally behind the main stage. Like we didn't know we were behind it until the show started, and we we didn't realize the show. We couldn't started, see anything. We like, they had they reel, reeled out a TV and plugged it in and said, "This is what it looks like," complete with commercials. So when it, we couldn't tell what was going on, they were showing commercials. So but we, we so were we, closest. We, we were the closest. Let, let's be, I think for for our section, not obviously the whole building, but for like the celebrities, like the people who got free tickets section, uh-huh. we were the we were the closest to the um concession stand. Yeah, I, we, I were. Say, <laughs> we were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were. Because oh my God, can I tell y'all the Prudential Center has amazing chicken tenders. I'm gonna right now. I'm not gonna hold you. Girl. So they were good. those chicken. So me and Monet went to go, went to go see um Lizzo at the Lizzo. basketball arena in Indianapolis. I, I don't know what team it is. The Timberwolves? That's Minnesota. Mm, that doesn't sound oh. right. Anyway, whatever the basketball team is, those chicken tenders, I the cannot. Werewolves? In, the werewolves? They were not good. 
I cannot in good faith tell you those chicken tenders, did them chicken tenders, them chicken tenders were, were terrible. Oh, terrible. But bitch, the prudential sensor, I will go back just for the tenders. Bitch, I will go back just for the they were baked just at the right. They were like fried mm. and baked. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what yes. was going on. I'm getting tickets to a John Bon Jovi Girl, concert just to get the chicken tenders. I had one chicken tender and I was like, Jake, you got to go back. You need to go back there. <laughs> or Patty or whoever had them chicken tenders. I was texting everybody in the group. Everybody oh, bring so back chicken tenders. <laughs> also, so so I was so excited. I was like most excited about seeing Nicki Minaj, and I, and I, and um, I I made this. Jo- I was joking because Monet went to the concession stand, and I was like, mm. Monet's gonna watch. Um, Nicki's gonna start while Monet's gone. Bitch, mm. Monet. Nicki was waiting for Monet to leave. <laughs> Monet <laughs> rounded the corner, and we heard Nicki Minaj start doing. Um, which song did she start? I can't remember which song she started. She with. started with Roman's it's Revenge. Like, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. But, but you were thing. right so, on Yeah, so where we were sitting, like, Nikki ended up on that stage where the concession stand was a little bit, and a little to the left of the concession stand, you could fully yeah. see the other stage. So I saw, like, we heard and heard them announce her, and we, myself and I forgot who I was with, Kennedy, we saw, like, her first bit. Then we kind of walked with her, and we saw the end of it. But so I saw her. And I was you. really Girl, you I were in that seat by the time... Um, uh, super, whatever came on. Y'all, you were well, but, well, in she, she did she did all Nikki Nikki traveled to all three stages. And yeah. Monet was mm-hmm. there by the time Nikki got to the second stage, which we literally couldn't see at all. We were watching on the screen. Yeah. But I also was really embarrassed because like I was just so excited to see Nicki Minaj that I like started crying while doing these songs. But but then I see Pep and like Pep was like I, I didn't want Pep to see me crying because I was crying to like moment for life. I got it on video, bitch. Oh, is I it? was like I was like, I could have this. <laughs> Oh my for God, life, Pep, Pep, for life. You, you I will send that video. video. Please, we're gonna put it in the in the, in the, in the And I was right like, now. I don't want Pep to see me crying to a moment for life. And then I looked over <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God! And then, I was I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that Peppermint will get a moment. Pep Pep always got that phone, getting a picture or a video or something. But it's like documenting it's a, but life. It's like, but it's like an auntie. You know, when your, when your auntie take a picture, you will. not you will that picture will never see the light of day. It is it, it, Pep is always I don't take taking pictures, pictures to share them. I just take pictures and keep them. <laughs> and Pep be in the house is like Pep be in the house like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like, oh God. Pep, but, but, I, you, but you did do a good job uh documenting uh Black Queer Night on Broadway. Uh you and Mila both. Y'all turned those reels around so fast. I was gagged. <laughs> I was like, well, I, that's because I was intentional. I was like very intentional about it. And I don't like, I realized I don't like doing that. But I was like, let me go ahead and like, okay, let me take video of this. Let me take a video. And I was like trying to push mm. that together. And, you know, it wasn't so bad, you know. But I don't have energy for reels. The ki- the people who, I really do commend people who, because do you know how many times I have tried? I'm like, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to reel this trip, whatever. Like, I'm going to do me getting out the house and getting on the plane and going to the gig and da da By the time I get to the plane, literally leave, leaving LA, I have already forgotten to take Done. half the videos I already said I was going to take. And I, I, I'm, I'm so bad at it. It's so, yeah. my brain is just so shitty. Yeah, you you look up and you realize I, I missed a chunk of the, the the narrative. So then all of a sudden it's like try going shoes, and then you're in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you gotta I find can. some way to stitch it together. I can't do it, honey. I will say this: I love this new trend. So you, obviously, a lot of us do brand stuff and like stuff to post. I love so back in the day. Well, not back in the day. Like when brand, when I first started doing brand <laughs> stuff. In my day. Back when I first started doing brands, so like after season, like season ten, like when you had to do videos, you had to make sure you said like all the audio in the video. But now the trend is now like having the video of you doing the thing and putting a voiceover, and that That's makes much doing content easier. so much easier. It's so much better because then if you do the video and rec- you in drag and you already recorded the thing, and you forgot to say the thing, you're like, "Fuck, I have to get in drag and do it again." But now if you just had the video, mute the audio, and just put the voiceover on top of it, and it's way better. It is better. That's question. true. I have a question I want to ask you both, but I have to uh, yeah. I have to ask it after this break. Okay. Okay. All right, we're back. So, here's a, a real question: What good is sitting all alone in your room? I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Like, I, I mean, if you're gonna do anything, come hear the music play. 
You know, I mean, life is a cabaret, old chum. You call Come me old? to the... Can I call you chum? Damn, damn. You, are, you are so silly. Um, <laughs> so silly. First of all, how, do you have any connection? Do you have any uh, particular connection to that uh, film or the stage play? I've never seen it. Oh, wow. I know that I know the music from just being in nightlife and working in drag and being queer. I know like not all I know some of it, but I've never seen the show. I know like the I know the Liza part. I know the Alan Cummings part. Not know them. Like I know this the big songs from those roles. But I've never seen Not like not when I say I know the track. I can go in. <laughs> <laughs> what is what, what what is what is Alan Cummings? He's the he's the not the not the matrix. He's the MC. He's the MC. And and Liza Minnelli is uh Sally Bowles. Sally Bowles. Sally Bowles. Yeah, yeah, I did and see the revival on Broadway uh, with Alan with Cummings. Mich- with, uh, and... with, with Michelle Williams? She was Sally Bowles? I, 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 I don't remember who. It must, I must Not have seen from Destiny's kind of Child. Night. Not from Destiny's Child. Oh. The, broad, the, broad, the Broadway actor Michelle Williams. But also, Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child has also been on Broadway several times. But not. Yeah. She was Aida. in Aida. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw it in. That must have been 2000. 1998, I think, um, or nine. It was probably 1999. Uh, and then I started working at the Kit Kat Club because they would, it was so bizarre at, when it was at the round, like at the roundabout. They- um, In Germany? No, in in New York at the Roundabout Theater Company, um, they were at um, the, the club where they were doing the show. The Kit Kat uh, Club. Yeah, but it wasn't really the Kit Kat Club, but that's what they oh. call the Kit Kat Club. The theater yeah. in New York that had the performances mm. where Got the it. show takes place in the Kit Kat Club. Yeah. Uh, w- w- they would open up and turn into a nightclub at night because oh. they really, it was really like a kick, it was really like a nightclub. And so we would go in there and kiki at night um, and do our party. I can't remember what the name of the party was that was there, but it was really neat because they had the picture frame with all the light bulbs in it. And you just had to look mm-hmm. up and you could see like all of the set pieces and everything were above yeah. the like. Oh, you know, it, oh, oh, that's Studio 54. Yeah, it's Studio 54. Oh, work. The legendary club, the, like one of the most iconic clubs in the history of New York City. I would say probably yeah. the most two iconic clubs in the history of New York City from from being like an outsider who has who wasn't there my whole life. But by the time I showed up, what I hear about is Copacabana, um, Studio Fifty Four, the Pyramid, the Limelight, Limelight. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one. Bunny talks about all tunnel? the time. The tunnel. Uh-huh. Oh, the tunnel. The tunnel. There's How another one. Places? Bunny talks about all the time. Oh no, it's, I think it's Pyramid. Bunny always talks. No, about that's pyramid. the bathroom. No, Bunny's talking about the bathroom. Bunny talks about. Bunny. The- <laughs> <laughs> Bunny didn't use the bathroom. Bunny had a DJ booth uh, at her on her own, and the rumor was that she had an ad out um, in the back of the Village Voice, uh, which was a free paper, um, and the ad said, "Come to see Lady Bunny, uh, DJ, the DJ with the BJ's," and you would, what? and she would like <laughs> say, "Come on through." And you would just, I guess if you were some guy that wanted a blowjob, you would go back and honey, the, 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 it was the, da- it was the Kenny Sharp room, which was a small dance room. That's where the, most of the gay stuff was happening. And then the, uh, the DJ booth was in the corner and right behind the DJ booth was the emergent, the double doors that would either go outside or you could go up to the offices from there, whatever. But it was like, this was in a warehouse, like the biggest warehouse back in, back in the nineties in New York City, the building would be the entire building, and pro- because things were so poor in the in the eighties, entire buildings would just shut down. And then nightlife people would come in and put a nightclub in the building, but they wouldn't yeah. need or use the whole building. So like the office would be on like the eighth floor, and like the nightclub was the first two floors, and then there'd just be like dead floors in between and hallways that, that were like deserted. So she would take people back into that hallway the staircase all the time and girl i told this story i was like well shoot i'm gonna do that one day and i met this hot guy and i was like honey we are going back into the stairwell and i have this, lipstick, <laughs> this bright red lipstick on and first we went under the stage because like the stage was like one of those big platform stages but it was always up yeah. so like you could go under the stage and the first we tried to go under the stage but then like people were jumping on it and it was like creaking and i was like 
we're going to die. So let's go back into the hallway. So I went back behind the DJ booth into the hallway. And girl, we had a little time. And he was really <laughs> into like my lipstick coming off of my mouth onto something else. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was like so excited. And then girl, the I went up to get paid later at the end of the night. Uh, like four o'clock in the morning, I'm rolling up. And of course, no lipstick on. And people were like, oh, girl, did you have a good time? And I was like, no, I just took off my lipstick. And they're like, no, we saw how it came off. I didn't know there was a surveillance camera. They had just installed surveillance cameras in the hallway on the oh, staircase. Girl, oh I was going God. to town. And I was like, oh, I had a sex tape. I made a sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, never again. That is that oh, they got crazy. me. They, all of them, the security guards, the everybody, the manager. Pep came out and the whole the, everyone faced the door like this. I was there. I said, I, 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 after, after that video, I was like, I know, I know how she working on Monday. She working. On <laughs> they, they said, honey, we know you can. They said, we know you can sing and dance, but baby, we didn't know you could do all that. Uh, <laughs> but anybody that sees him. He, y'all would have been like, oh, good girl, because he was, I was like, oh, no, we're going. That wasn't usually <laughs> my tea, but I was like, come here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Not Pep, the mouth of South Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> Not South Ferry. Is, Let me find this so video. Like, uh, oh, well, wait, well, wait, is Bob, what is your connection to Cabaret? You mean, you mean like the, the film or just Cabaret in general? I mean, I, I was mentioning the, the film, film because I would want to talk about, oh, I mean, my, my connection to the film is that I, I obviously I've seen the film. I wish I could have seen it on, on Broadway. I don't think I was even living in New York City at the time. I thought they did a revival. It was 1998 like, that it opened. But I don't know when it closed. Might have been 97. It, was, it you closed in MC, like Bob? 2000. Um, could I be the MC? I don't think I'm, I'm I'm probably appropriate for the MC because the MC, I think the MC, like, I don't know if the MC has to be white German, but the MC oh. is like a German with like a with like an accent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if there's a role for me in Cabaret, but I do, obviously I, I love the music. I love the show. Um, I really like, it's just a really, really good show. There was a controversy because they say that that was the year that, um, the, uh, that Miss, D- uh, Donna, not Donna, Jesus Christ, that Miss Diana Ross was supposed to win the Oscar. I believe, I might be getting this right. I believe the year that Liza Minnelli won the Oscar for Sally Bowles was the year that Diana Ross was nominated for Lady Day Season uh-huh. Blues. Lady. Oh. Or is it mahogany? No, oh, it's no, it's lady sings the blues. Yeah, lady yeah. sings the blues. What you, you know, she and everyone that. was like, she should have, she should have won, and it, and but and then they were like, this was this was her chance to win, and she did not win, you know, um, you know, yeah. But Got that's it. that's that's my connection. Do you, do you consider yourself? A, do you two consider yourself cabaret artists? Um, uh, <sighs> I've definitely no. done stuff in the cabaret scene. Yeah, I've done stuff in the cabaret scene. I wouldn't call myself a cabaret artist. I I I I, I would fancy myself a, a one woman show, or but not a cabaret. I think cabaret is a little cabaret to me is more of the. I mean, I don't know what the exact definition of cabaret. When I think of a cabaret, I think it's one person and is very it's like heavily like singing with 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 live music mm-hmm. for a cabaret. And mm-hmm. I don't think I do that a whole bunch. Like, who's a cabaret is. artist? It's 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 a cabaret. I mean, essentially, a ca- the cabaret scene is is live nightlife, you know. And cabaret is it encompasses many things, and it's changed over the years. But it was like a cabaret was the was where you would go to hear live music, which was the only kind of music that you know they didn't have digital music. But they invented right. the word cabaret, right. so like you would go to hear music in a small setting where there was drinks and kind of spending the evening because they weren't doing like full dance clubs. So lots of stuff was a cabaret back then. Um, But now these days, the cabaret scene, like by modern definitions, is like, you know, live music by a a singer. You're right. Definitely singing, telling jokes and kind of, um, and it's not necessarily like a full-fledged concert. It's an act that, that, really relies on the back and forth between the audience and the and the people. And there's an entire scene, cabaret scene yeah. of people who, you know, and there's actually cabaret awards um in New York anyway. Uh oh, and these really? are yeah. And and it's small houses like theater, small small houses and it's not quite theatrical seating. It's not like where everybody's just a bunch of chairs looking at a show. 
It's tables. tables. Tables, yeah. Like I 54 mean, Below, the Lori Beachman the Theater, Beachman. Joe's um, Pub. The, Joe's Pub. There's that yeah. one uptown, like, where, 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 it's like on 72nd Street. Oh, the yeah. Tri- uh, the Tri-City. The Tri-City. Tri- uh-huh. tri- 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 not tri- tri- Stadium. Tri- yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Triad. Um, I shot a music the, video the, there. Uh, the the oh, Prudential. Really? No, I'm kidding. Because I couldn't uh, afford the box. So we the shot box. at I have the Triad. never been to the box. And I'm so, I cannot be, I believe. It looks I've just never, like the Triad. Or it did look just like the Triad. And I've, I've heard of these crazy acts that would happen at the box and like these really subversive, like crazy things yeah. that I have never been. I've the, been the box is true cabaret. Like the box is true yeah. cabaret because there's like crazy things happening, crazy. I'm not saying that the other things aren't, but like you would go there to see, you know, somebody do something like sexual and kind of pushing the envelope and inventive or extremely artistic that's like whoa kind of trippy and then obviously have a great voice singing while doing it and so the box is like definitely part of the cabaret scene yeah so th- there is a, a a performer i believe i'm gonna get her name right i think her name is rose wood and oh, rose I know rose. Wood was a miss rosewood is a man like she is a a a pillar at the box. So Miss Rosewood has a very interesting appearance. She is th- very like like def- like jacked. Like she is like defined. And oh and gross. um and she also has a like her she like she shaves her hairline back real like really far. Like if you think Divine's hair was far back, Miss Rosewood her would shave her hair like even Further back, like halfway to, through her head. How do you? Is and, it spelled like rose and the word wood? Yep, just one word. Type in rosewood drag or rosewood cabaret or something like that, uh-huh. or Miss Rosewood. And she, I, I will describe the act that I saw Miss Rosewood perform, and it is truly one of those like performances. You're like, oh my god! So Rosewood comes out and she's she's just she has her she's has like I, I think I might be giving her, but I feel like she has a towel over her chest and a towel on her head. And her face is covered in like, I think maybe shaving cream. Uh-huh. And she shaves it all off. And her presentation is very feminine. And then she takes off the towel, but her chest is traditionally masculine. And then she takes off the thing and then she her hair is traditionally feminine. And then she she's singing, I think she's I think she's lip syncing to natural woman. And then she stands up. She's been sitting the whole time. She's sitting on, I'm not lying. This dildo must have been at, on the on the smallest side a foot long, and on the sk- on the skinniest side, the size of like um the the bottom half of a McDonald's um cup. You know those cups that they, they're they're big and they're a little bit smaller on the bottom. The part that goes in the cup holder that wide. When she stood up, everyone was like, "Oh," and and she was on it the whole the whole performance. Then she stood up and it was like, and it was just like, I cannot believe she was sitting on that. That was, in, that's insane. That was insane. That was at the box? At the box. Wow. Yeah, the box had, I mean, you had to like, the, that's why the box was really exclusive with like who they would let in. You, you couldn't have phones, like camera phones when that became really big. And I don't really know about now, uh, but. You that's know, why they Raven, didn't let Monet in. Was Raven the MC? I don't. I don't think it was Raven. I, I think I would remember it if it was Raven. <clears throat> Raven um, was ra- for Drag Race. Raven? No, Raven. No, Raven. O. Raven. Raven. Is- o. Oh, I've I've, I've met Raven before. Money, expand your mind, please. <laughs> Which expand your mouth to close? How about that? The uh, the um the there's also a really um another. She's kind of similar to Rose, um in terms of like aesthetic and look. Her name is uh, Narcissister. I'm not sure if she's still performing in the cabaret. Baby, scene, but I love Narcissister. Didn't she date Marilyn Manson for a while? I don't know. I th- I th- I'm gonna Google the Jacob. He Google that. I think Narcissister dated Marilyn Manson. Narcissister did an act where, and, and, and this is all here, so I've never actually seen the act. But apparently, Narcissister she wears this mask. She did America's Got Talent too. She wears this like mask. She's like a black black person, and she wears a mask. I don't know what she looks like actually, but she's rather oh, yeah, slim. I see her. She's gorgeous. She, yeah, she has. She has. A, you seen her face before? Who? 
You see Narcissus face? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls, I used to book her at my shows. She'd show up oh. and then get dressed. I heard the rumor that she I the rumor that I heard was that no one ever saw her face. She only took electronic payments. She would get in the car, do her numbers, and then leave. Girl, what, what I was booking her before we had electronic payments. <laughs> <laughs> like before we had I electricity. Heard that, yeah, I heard Narcissus sister would like would only show up like she would like like walk from the cab to the door to the to the show back into the cab and pull off and like no one ever that's like the rumor that I heard about her. What's up? Well, so well, let's uh, on a- Wikipedia it says um, Narcissus sister was also asked to be the date and accompany Marilyn Manson to various events surrounding the screening of his film Born Villain. So I'm not yeah. sure if they were actually a couple or if he was just sort of bringing her along to like as part of his entourage. Well, let's take yeah. a break and we'll talk a little bit about how narcissistic that is, I think, to hide your face. So the last thing I'll say before, when we're back, the last thing I'll say is like, she's through this act. I don't want, I don't want to bury the lead here, but I don't think she does it anymore. Maybe she still does. She would come on stage naked. And mm. then by the end of the show, she would pull a... Is Bob frozen for you too? Yeah, he froze. <laughs> Give it a minute. It's Narcissus okay. sister saying, don't you expose Girl, my act, bitch. But also, but just the, the, the way that it paused, that is hilarious. Literally <laughs> as Let me take a picture it. of it. <laughs> that picture we'll never see. <laughs> we'll never see this picture. <laughs> I'll text that, it to you right now, bitch. That is hilarious. Literally, that is so... He's like, pulled a dress out of out her... Out of her... Uh, <laughs> and knowing Bob, he probably still talking, not realizing that no one else is hearing him. He just talking, 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 talking. Y'all know she'll talk, honey. God, now Bob is back. Oh, how oh no! Wait. <laughs> not, not Pep said, not Pep said, "Oh no!" When Bob came back, Pep said, "Oh no!" <laughs> no, but I mean, not "Oh no" that Bob is back. Oh no, that it's is. so topsy turvy. But oh, Bob can't hear. He can't. Uh, Someone what? is helping Bob okay. do something. You're, you were talking about the... Oh, the um, yes. Have you... But I, I think it might be making yeah, noise, yeah. though. Bob... Bob... Um, uh, Bob can you, <laughs> there we go. Bob, mute. Mute yourself. Okay, come back. Pepper and, Pep, mute yourself. Pepper and I do our own thing. Okay. My, y'all, y'all, y'all here? We can hear you. Yeah, we're here. This is insane. Hello? Anyway, like I was saying, like I was saying. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Like, yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. Bob, we don't hear you. Like I was, you can't hear me? Yes, you can. Peppermint can say she can hear me, bitch. (laughs) Anyway, what I was saying, y'all, we we just had a, y'all, I have just disappeared for like 10 minutes in the time space continuum, but what I was saying was, Narcissus sister used to do an act where she pulled a dress out of her pussy. That was that was the that was the whole story. The gag was it literally it literally is like you like Narcissus sister used to do an act. She would be butt naked. Then she would pull a dress out of her, <laughs> and you froze. And you froze. And we all there. stood there for at least a minute, thinking you were like <laughs> yes. making it dramatic. We, I was like I was like I see Bob commit to a bit. This is ridiculous. I was like, girl, pull it out of where. Well, it's more than she. I mean, gosh, she would, she would, she would get completely dressed, but it wasn't like she would just pull a dress out of her. That yeah, was the last I, thing she'd do. Yeah, she, I, I, I she pulled had, it down because of all the technical difficulties. Yeah. There was the shoes and the hat. There was the cigarette. There was the whole. She th- would the like hair. fully. She would fully accessorize, and she'd start completely naked and be fully dressed with accessories that were coming out of her body in different places, and it's genius. What, yeah, what? she put a scarf in her asshole, a dress in her pussy. She opened up her hair, pulled shoes out of her hair. It was crazy. Don't tell every piece. Yeah, damn, but Bob. The, well, I don't know. I don't know yeah. if she still does it. You know what? It was well, but not she, bleep not, her not, thing. not after this day. Do the bleep, <laughs> y'all. Whoever's edited, do a, do a bleep out of the bleep, a bleep from the bleep, a bleep from the bleep, and then you'll y'all get to go figure out what okay. what uh, what but, you saw. Well, Pat, yeah, so then they'll so buy tickets. You, so do you, do you with your with your new show letters your your new tour coming out are you would you still say that you that you um that you is it a cabaret show how how would you describe I'm your pulling show? a I'm pulling a dress I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm dildo out of my <laughs> I'm pulling a dress out of a dildo <laughs> um, 
Um, is it a? Are you? What's the question? Is it a cabaret? Yes, it is cabaret. Yeah, it's cabaret. And I think I think a lot of people, especially those who are Drag Race fans, aren't necessarily used to seeing a their drag entertainers sing live while they're in drag, mm -hmm. but B aren't used to going and hearing live music that's not like um, house or techno or electronic. Mm -hmm. And so this is not, this is none of those things. Uh, obviously me and Juju B, you know, people know us from Drag Race, but it's not a drag show. Uh, it is, a, it's about the music. It's about, it's like about our, straight up R&B live music with a band. And that's what it is. And um, so it is cabaret. Yeah. Traditionally, we have not seen drag artists. Like, I, I do make R&B music, and I'm working on an R&B album. You, you don't see drag artists doing R&B, so I, I find this to be very exciting. I'm, I, I hope so. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And, I, and this is obviously the music that we love. Mm -hmm. but we don't really mm -hmm. get an opportunity to, to sing and perform it in these spaces with yeah. these folks that hopefully will come and, you know, hopefully buy tickets to come yeah. and see it, you know, so please buy tickets. <laughs> when it, when did, did you, are all the so, are all the songs from uh, your new album? Or do you, are you doing any throwbacks? Are we going to get any any uh, Black Pepper? Are we going to get any Dolly My Titty? Are we going to get any uh, Working Girl? Like, are we going to get any of that? There's no turn up. There's no like. There's no like. Oh, this is a, j a banger. No, unfortunately. So the songs that I did um, that are about like strutting and sashaying or look at my shoes or like how much money. Unfortunately, I'm not doing those songs. I'm doing stuff. This is really about like, oh my gosh, trans black trans people are under attack and all we hear is trauma. Let's sing about us being loved because nobody ever talks about how much they love black trans people. So let me actually talk about a relationship that I was in that was beautiful and and present and and healthy. Um and I wrote music all about it. And on the album, there are some covers, some stuff I didn't write, like um, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, which is a Carole King song yes. that uh, the Shirelles did and then Roberta Flack did. And so many people have recorded it. Uh, also, I do a Stevie Wonder song, I Believe When I Fall In Love. Um, there's uh, So there's a couple covers on the, on the albums. It's three albums. The third one's not out yet. It comes out soon. Um, it's the Letters to My Lovers series three albums and the first one is a girl like me the second one is moment of weakness and the third one is validation and so i'm doing music from oh. those albums no, question for so this lover that you're writing about has have they hit you up like no like this is the thing but i mean hello these this i i we got disconnect we broke up and so we were like step we i was not in contact with him for a minute mm -hmm. and um and he changed his Instagram name. Like, we had no contact. He changed okay. his Instagram name, so I couldn't find it. But he, this was still following me. <laughs> and so he's seeing everything I'm doing. And I'm like, that is not really fair. Um, I finally found him again. And we, we like, are um, amicable. Like, there's no bad blood. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did tell him initially, like, years ago, when I first started writing this stuff a couple... 2020 2019 that i was writing working on some music i was gonna be telling my side of the story <laughs> and just you just so you and know. if you want to do one you can have you can make an album too yours, if you want to clear honey, it. do yours too honey it'll be all, it'll be all what you got to say what you got to say uh, i did talk to him and he was like um recently he was like oh you know when we broke up uh we had all these um fights and i was like we did not fight uh, so he he's, has a different side of the story, but the, mine is the truth. Can you imagine Do he you, puts out? You remember when it had no scrubs and no pigeons? He does he does his his uh, a whole a whole um yeah of um, uh, rapping rapping bars <laughs> bars to my lovers. He like yeah yeah. Let us to my ex bitch. Is like what? Yeah, worst sex. I don't know. Um, but what? he uh he oh yeah go ahead. Well, I want to talk about your, like, your, your, uh, do you still, because we were, we were talking to Tajik recently, and, mm -hmm. you know, Tajik was saying that he didn't really, that he didn't necessarily, like, love his, his, like, strut, fierce Miss Mama music as much as he loved his other music. Do you, like, have the same love for both of your, like, styles of songs? Do you, like, love them both, or? Oh, yeah, in two different ways. Like, I mean, I do, that other stuff is, it's pretty, it's lots of fun. It's simple. You don't have to think about it. It's just put it on. I like the beat. 
you know, half those songs, you probably don't even know what I'm saying other than like one or two words. And so like, that's fun. Um, but I remember when we were working on a lot of that music, I wanted to talk about like real stuff, mm-hmm. my feelings mm-hmm. and what I thought about stuff. And I was like, you can't do that in a song that's about shoes, strut, work, feel fierce. You know, it's just like, I'm I'm cute. I'm cute. And then the song's over. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, I'm cute, but I want to do talk about how I feel, not just about how things, how I look. And so I realized I needed to do some music that m- has more words in it, that describes the stuff, describes what I'm feeling. And I feel like R&B is really the best place for for that. For I, I, I love that. And you know, what I, what I feel about that is that I feel like the more queens, the more drag artists that we get to start doing R&B, like we have Peppermint, Jujube, Shay's doing a bunch of R&B music as well, myself. Like the more that we have more artists doing that kind of stuff, we can start creating tours that are these R&B tours. And you know, because again, I... The- First. I, the first one, <laughs> right? And I love going to the big shows and and, and, and to a Todrick show and, and me and Bob show and hearing like mm-hmm. the really high high energy stuff. But I, I would also pay money to go to a drag show, a, a, a tour that is just R&B, groovy, like vibey music. I would I, I would love that. So I'm so happy that you that you're, you and Juju B are starting it and, and hopefully there are more drag artists doing that type of vibey R&B music and we can start doing those tours and fans, because yeah. fans, we a lot of fans, there is a lot of intersection with fans who like listen to Summer Walker and Tank and SZA. Yeah, and you listen, if you they listen to all those them. artists, we are inspired by them too. Yeah. And we're inspired by the people that inspired those artists. Yeah. And so this is, the, you know, it's a it was a risk and a gamble because, you know, it's not so automatic for people to, like, want to go to this show. They're like, well, are you going to have voguing? Right. No. Well, you yeah. know, so, like, it's an automatic no for a lot of people. Yeah. But for the people who really do enjoy this kind of music and really have, I think the people who have been in the situation where they've, where they've been in a small room and heard a live band where mm-hmm. every single element is being created in that moment on stage and a, and the person singing and f- understanding how different that feels than just pressing play on an MP3. Um, I think those people will really appreciate this. Yeah. Okay. I think that in the same way that when Bianca De Rio started touring, doing strictly stand-up, no numbers, no nothing, that was probably really wild for a lot of fans of drag, not just drag race, mm-hmm. but drag in general, being like, wait, she's... Wait, there's no, there's like not even a single song. And they're like, no, she just comes out and talks. And I know, and I just want to point out that Bianca Dorio did not invent this. Coco Peru does shows like this. There are, there are lots of queens who do shows like this. I want to make that ab- abundantly clear, um, distinctly clear. I don't know if I'm using that word right still to this day. Um, distinctly, not whatever distinctly. the, me and Monet had a thing about distinctly and, dis- and distinctively. Anyway, um, but, um, you know, I think something about Bianca doing these massive venues, doing just stand up, did actually pave a way for other queens to go in these venues and do just stand up and not and not mm-hmm. you. So I think that you know, Peppermint has always been ahead of her time, and ah! right on time at the and right on time at the same time. <laughs> and 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 also, I think Peppermint, you're a great lyricist. You have some really great lyrics. Um, I really really love your song "Best Sex." It has great lyrics. Um, it is also a, just a great pop in general. The whole album is good. I have it on vinyl in my living room. Um, Jacob, can you grab the vinyl and show it? Um, I have it on vinyl. Um, are there still vinyl co- copies available or did they all get sold? There's a few vinyl copies left. Yeah, there's not a whole yeah. lot, but there's a few. So I, I recommend you get it. The, I, I, I Vinyl is dope and I love that, I love so, that people are to sell vinyl. I just don't have a record player. And I don't. Uh, what I don't want to do is purchase vinyl because I feel like I won't I won't use it. But it's it is more nice, collector. Uh, yeah, collective yeah. and commemorative thing to have in your home and to hold it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really dope. But you can play it. There it is. There it is. Yes. Letters. <laughs> to my lovers. That's such a, girl a good idea. Like one. Honestly, yeah. Uh, oh, I I also want you to do letters to some to y'all whack ass niggas and all the ones that really Hello. got you together. Oh honey, well there's songs for them on to them <laughs> on there. Trust me. Yeah, that's why it's not just one lover, it's all my lovers. Oh. And lovers means anybody I had sex with or who tried to talk to me between 2019 and 2022. <laughs> do you do you consider I'm yourself all a, y'all on blast? Do you consider yourself a, a lyricist pep? 
Because I, I I consider you a lyricist. I look, I'm looking at some of your lyrics right now from some of your songs, and I'm like, this is so great. Thank you, girl. I don't I don't really consider myself a lyricist, but I do consider myself a writer. Um, and and I've co-written. Most of these songs are co-written. Um, but, like, I'll come up with the idea. I'll come up with, like, the basics and then the fine-tuning. You know, like, I'm in, in you know, every single point of it, I'm like, okay, we have to add this. We have to take this out. Um, and so, yeah, the... The the moment that I was like, oh my God, something I wrote really turned into something so beautiful was the song A Girl Like Me, which um, is basically about like, you know, wanting to, everybody wanting, understanding the feeling of wanting to be loved and then also wanting to share that love and, and also being deserving of it, um, especially queer people, trans people, because we haven't really been taught how to be in relationships the way that they are today. Mm-hmm. Um and so when we were sitting down writing that, and it was during it was remotely on Zoom or Skype or one of them things, and um, we wrote the, the music, and then I, you know, sang through it, um, and at the end of it, we were like both in tears. Me and Adam mm-hmm. Joseph, who co-wrote it with me, uh, um, if, and I was like, okay, this is this is we're onto something. If any of you want a a sneak piece or a taste of how great this music is, Pep did a. You, I mean, a gut wrenching and absolutely beautiful rendition um, of of um, a girl like me on the first uh, Black Queer Town Hall, um, and it is like from her living room. It is just, it, and it's available online. You can go check it out right now. It's on the it's on the first, the first like twenty twenty Black Queer Town Hall, the third day. So there's a three day event. 2020 Black Queer Town Hall third day. You can skim through and see Pepper. Honestly, don't skim through. Watch the whole thing. That's some amazing performances from Shia Diamond, uh, Peppermint, Monet Exchange, um, Monet. Monet Exchange, Target you? Call. Did you, I do a number? You-ha? Oh yeah, I, 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 did a, I did. I did a lip sync. Yeah. Oh, this is a U-ha. Um Okay, so Pep. So when 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 what are the dates of the tour? Where can we get tickets? It's the whole month of November. Uh, people, You can get tickets at my link in bio on my socials or uh, peppermintonline.com slash events. Uh, and it's basically the entire month of November. We're not going to every city in the country, and it's just a, a U.S. tour, um, so United States only uh, right now. But it's we're doing the, a few cities on the East Coast, a few cities on the West Coast, and Chicago. Work. <laughs> what and if you did every city in America in the month of November? That'd be insane. Oh my God! There's not even there's like <laughs> you have to do like two some some shows have to be two. I mean, you can like Pep is ahead of her time and can do anything. Let me put <laughs> it that do, way. You could do you could you could like you could do Spokane, which is in Washington, and um and um. Idaho, Cor- Curd, or whatever, because they're like twenty minutes apart. So <laughs> some states you could do two in a day. Yeah, just run, run it from show to run shit. Just run. do some show that today. Yeah. No, that'd be insane. People okay, be that's, up, be that's, not that, happy with that that's last kind of one. a fierce idea, y'all. I think someone who did fifty shows in a month, like in in every state, <laughs> that could be. I want to do that. like a marathon. That, that was my goal a while back. I, a while back, I was like, I want to do, I want to do fifty shows in fifty, fifty shows in fifty states in fifty days, and like oh, just oh my god, go, do every and end and end end in Hawaii. Or start in Hawaii and end in like uh, I don't know Pensacola, Florida. Oh God! Um, <laughs> but I was like, that'd be so much fun. And you wait, and you do have opening acts for some cities, right? We do have opening acts. I'm going to announce them right now for the first time ever Work. in Work. public. So the opening, the first night, which is November second in Seattle, we do not have an opening act, and we don't have an opening act on. Um, there's two shows that we don't have open acts, but I'm really excited about our opening acts. They are, I'm announcing them right now. I mean, I'm fine. Here we go. Um, and so uh, in Los Angeles, we have an artist named Swish. Uh, San Francisco, we have Bomb Snacks, which is a, a group. Uh, in oh. Portland, uh, we don't have a, an opening act. Uh, and then in Atlanta, we have a group called Alto Moon. They are fantastic. Uh, in Chicago, we have One Up Duo um, featuring Jerome Bell Bastion, who's on the album. He sings Broken Home with me. Uh, yeah, but Boston, that name sounds familiar. Have... 
yeah, he was they one up duo what performed on um America's Got Talent as well. Mm. Um in Boston we have Yavin and in Philly we have Joy uh Joey Kathos and in New York City we have DJ Skyfe and DJ Skyfe Oh my god. Like I should be opening for DJ Skyfe. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Uh, was Jerome Bell Bastion? He 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 was in part of your show in New York City when I came, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerome sang. Yeah, he sang on stage with me the song that we have together called "Broken Home," uh, and so yeah. he he came out and sang in the New York City show. Word. And uh, me me and uh, me and a couple of friends went to go see. I bought a whole table and then just invited my friends to come join me. It was a, a y'all. It is a really really good show. And then Jacob's Jacob's mom went to go see it the next day. Jacob's family went to go see it the next day. And and uh, affirmed everything that I said. We we gave it uh, very similar uh, glowing reviews um, because it really is. And and I, and I got to see um, I got to see like a rendition of it again in um in L A at the Soho House. Um, it was like a well, mashup we did of that and kind of your old stuff. I'm yeah, that see was like a, this time. <laughs> that was a uh, like a, a Cliff's Notes version, like you know, uh, pr- promo version, but. Uh, it's the same show. It's essentially the same show. So anybody, if if, if you saw it in New York, um, this time we're adding Juju B to the show. She has her. It's a it's a double headlining show. So she has her album and her songs that she's gonna sing, and then good me Juju. with Bad my Juju. band and album. Mm-hmm. I don't, good, I, 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 good Juju. I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, what is? Do you know much about what Juju is doing on her side? I don't want to put you on the spot and, and be like, "What's everything she's doing?" But do you know much about what Juju is doing in her set? I don't set? know. I don't have her set list com- committed to memory, but it's songs from Good Juju, which is her mm-hmm. album volumes one and two. Yeah, yeah, nice. And so she's That's- got some. I mean, she's got some really great music. And we're there's actually a song uh, that we're working on together that we're going to surprise. I mean, I guess not Ooh. surprise if I say it. Um, but we're doing a song together from her album. What, is, 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 oh, I, don't tell me anything else. I was going to say, what's the name? But don't tell me anything else. I'll, I'll wait and see because it, that sounds <laughs> that sounds incredibly exciting. Can I say, this the entire time of this podcast, those boxes behind Bob's head, don't they look like they're... Like they're Picture frames? They're, no. They're, are they actual... They look like they're flat, like they're... One no, they're just drawings on the wall. They're, they're not. They're not actually like. They're oh, just. Oh, that's a drawing. No, yeah, they're, they're it's, just, it's, just, I, I, it's just. It's just. It's just. It's just drawings on the wall. Are no, they're just drawings. What they're about they're the not, plant? The, the plant is also a part of the drawing. It's a plant. This is. This no, is a picture. Bob, he's not. Bob, touch it. Do do do. do it. No, you're lying. You're not. You're lying. <laughs> you're Listen. lying. Pick up the plant. <laughs> I know it's a mind and like the whole time I was like is that a because it looks it looks like it could be a drawing or it could be just 1D or it could be I was it was fucking me up the entire time I didn't take any mushrooms today either I didn't I'm not microdosing I'm tr- truly tripping out Monet Monet be microdosing sometimes how's that working out for you Ma? great I don't microdose. Tell us about it I've never microdosed I went to Vancouver you said just, you when you talked to us today you said you were microdosing well, okay. I went to Vancouver. I, w- I did a Just for Last Vancouver a f- comedy festival there. And mm-hmm. they had, because psilocybin is legal in Vancouver. So, like, at the festival. They psilocybin? Were like, psilocybin. Psilocybin. What the hell is psilocybin? That is, that is the drug that makes you, that's, that's in mushrooms, that makes you um, hallucinate. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've heard about it. Yeah. Psilocybin is mushroom. Mushroom psilocybin. It's interchangeable. So they so they were selling like like packets of like of mushrooms with the pills. Like at a venue, like at a vending machine place. No, they were like for the for the talent. Like it was like were the Girl Scouts selling them? Like was it Girl Scouts being like buy some psilocybin so we can go camp? Like what was it? It was in a gifting suite. So when you do an event, like it's a gifting suite for all the artists working the event. There's a gifting suite you can go and just get free stuff. Can so, I get their names and contact the people giving out drugs? Can I get their names and contacts, please? Yeah, it's called it's called the the um the province of Vancouver, the whole province. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, no. I, a also, gifting suite like when we when we went in um after jingle uh jingle the, jingle oh, bells or jingle oh, so, ball. Okay, I gotta talk about that. So we so <laughs> Pep and I we did the jingle ball. Oh, <laughs> we did the jingle ball together, and then. 
<laughs> so we're so we they had us in this like holding room. So Pepper and I had this holding room and like the whole Forever. Time, forever. And we're like, we wanna we wanna like get because we know that at these events they have these gifting suites and they bitch, you get everything. You can get like a MacBook, you clean you can house. get a phone, like they give like these celebrities like these really crazy gifts. So then when they, so then, so then I think they told us about the gifted suite and when Pep heard that we were allowed to come, like, girl, move, we're going now. And we, go. <laughs> I, and we was at the end of the thing. I didn't know we could go to the gifting suite and nobody told us that there was going to be a gifting suite. Everybody else was coming in and out with their um, Lamborghinis and Porsches. And I'm like, well, 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 well what are we, like chopped liver? We're just sitting in the room having some um, tea and crackers. Where's the gifts? And so finally, and it was Christmas. It was Christmas. Like Jingle Ball. Like there's gifts, yeah. So we finally went over, girl. We got Kindles. Yeah, we got what else, so much, girl? We, we got, got everything. We got so we, we had. There was this. It was this like weighted blanket, and I didn't realize. I looked up that weighted blanket cost like eight hundred and twenty dollars for this weighted blanket mm-hmm. that was. Like, I gave blanket. mine away because I, I did already too. had one. I gave mine away too. And those, and those of you who don't know, like Pep is a tornado of a woman. Like when Pep comes into a room, Pep is like <laughs> bag. She's like. And like she comes in, like like Pep is is like she's wherever she's coming from, she's like running there. She's like, ah! and, she dro- and then, she, then she like, but then you get in the center of the turn and it's all very calm. But then when it's time to move again, Pep's like, <laughs> let's go. Pep's like, you this, give me that here. Hold on, call someone. Uh, uh, Google, do this. You pick up that. You over there, come here. You got this thing over there. <laughs> It's like people swirling around her. You you're whipped in. You're like, oh girl, what's going? Your wig gets snatched off. <laughs> but Pep and I, anytime I do a gig with Pep, I have to. Anytime I do a gig or an event or something, where Peppermint is one truly one of the funnest people to work with. Pep cracks me up. Oh, a key. Pep is a the key. Greatest. Anytime I see I have to do the thing with Pep, I'm like, thank God, it's gonna be a fucking Kikiana every time. <laughs> I always tell folks, there are people asking me who I want to work with. I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I practically only say two queens. I say Peppermint, Monet. Peppermint, Monet. These are things I say every single time when anyone's like, who, you don't work, who do you want to work with in this thing? And I say Peppermint, Monet. End of discussion. I don't usually get the choice. I'm get a, low, a little lower on the ring, on the rung. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're like, you show up. Whoever's there is there. And I'm like, Damn. <laughs> Bob just called me no no may. Did you realize just called me no may? Did I? Because, yeah, because because you were saying peppermint. <laughs> you said you said yes, you did. He said he said peppermint. He said peppermint and no may. Peppermint and no may. <laughs> I'm change my I name. don't feel like I said that, I but I like it. I kind of no may. No may. Hey, no may. We're still we're still waiting on the emergence of mistake. You have a lot. You have a lot of names you that you've been working out that you've been trying to. Um, yeah. Miss- Dang. Well, Pep, you, Pep, you changed your name, right, Pep? Like, did, did your name used to be like Gummy Bear? I did, that wasn't my first name. I changed. I got a divorce, I like to say. Peppermint Gummy Bear was my full name. That was my last name, Gummy Bear. Um, in the 90s, uh, before we had everything we have now, before Google. And it was just like, I was like, it was like candy-ish. I was, it was all cutesy at first, but I was like, no, nah, I want to be like, a little sexier, you know, after that blowjob in the stairwell. And so I was like, let me drop, drop. I'm a woman. Let me drop the gummy bear uh, part. And I should have kept it because it makes it so much easier, you know, Mm. but. Got it. Peppermint gum, peppermint gummy bear. Because when I was in there were still some people calling you peppermint gummy bear. There were still a few, a few of the, uh, a few of the queens who were a, a slightly longer in the tooth, referring to you as, uh, as peppermint gummy bear. And I was like, who is this gummy bear y'all talking about? Can I, can I say something? I, I've been, I've been trying not to say this because I've been trying to not be my feelings, but I feel some type of way that Bob the drag queen and peppermint gummy bear, that's your real name. Never invite me to y'all little game nights, y'all little, y'all little, y'all little video games parties. Oh. I've never invited. I've never been invited. Wait, one didn't time. we invite you to the SmackDown? That was the last I, I one was we there. Had. That was and, and and y'all only did that because y'all was trying to do it because it was on social media. But y'all been doing your little private ones. I have not been invited to. Pep and I've only done like two. We've done we've done like one or two private game nights. There have been one or two times me and Pep play games privately, and it was so that Pep could practice for the uh, for the for the, <laughs> for the game. Work. So I can learn yeah. how to turn on the box 
It really is between me and Jacob. It's more more a thing between me and Jacob than it is between Bob. I keep saying this. We're gonna send like some some little techie nerd to to Pep's house to be like click click click. click, 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 click. Do tech. I just don't play game things, and so like the buttons are so messed up. You know, like I don't like this. (laughs) <laughs> anyway <laughs> but Monet you got some nerve talking about not inviting people places you really got some nerve to either fix your lips to say those words we're not I gonna we're not gonna get you I literally invited you to the Halloween party that I'm a Halloween a little Halloween get together I'm in Atlanta okay but you, you know I'm in Atlanta though, but you were invited is the point you're I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta right now yeah I'm, I'm surprising my mom it's her birthday. My, my mom's birthday today. My mom's turning sixty. Y'all, hey, y- y'all are listen to this much later. But on October thirtieth, my mother, um, the lovely Miss Martha Caldwell from Corinth, Mississippi, turned sixty years old. So I'm going to go surprise, pop up at her house and be like, "And I birthday. called her well, before we started the podcast. I called her and I said happy birthday." She was like, "She's like, she was like, thank you, Monet. She like, Monet, can I tell you something?" I was like, "What's up?" She's like. You called me before my before my own son did. I said I said that is crazy. I can't mm. believe that he did not call you. I said he sure he probably will though. He probably just waking up. She's like, yeah, I hope so. I was like, I hope so too. Oh, mm, now I want to call my mama. You should have been like, I haven't heard from him in a week. No, okay, <laughs> that's not funny. I would. I know it's your that. birthday, but <laughs> <laughs> right, that is not funny, Bob. I mean, I didn't really come from a prank household. If you, if you come from like a house where you play like pranks on each other and stuff, no, no, I'm an only child. But well, you, your, like I, you and your parents didn't do like a like a maybe a um, a little salt in the pepper and sugar thing no, or a little. No, we never had pranks. I was just sitting there talking to myself in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard. I've I've realized that a lot of only children talk to themselves. That is white coming amongst uh you only childreners i've noticed that uh but i in my in my house when, when i when i go on tiktok and i see i i, I just don't like pr- pr- pranking is like okay maybe it's not a race thing but when i see that these like black kids pranking their parents on on on, on that TikTok, doesn't seem normal i could not imagine pranking my maybe it's just how i grew up my mother would it's because they have a camera yeah and my they're safe because back <laughs> Yeah, back you'd see you'd see my mom jump, and then all of a sudden you'd see a hand come towards the camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, like, it'd be like, a, like Blair, like Blair Witch found footage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, girl. I Not me with that. the update current reference. <laughs> right. And uh, my favorite ones is the is when like the kids are like planking, planking there, the African parents because African parents are so strict. Not planking. Not planking. Planking, planking African parents. I think it's very funny. Those, those, those well, there's this, there's this, there's this group online that they um they they put balloons around their home, and the balloons are filled with like foam and stuff. So like the guy will just be sitting on the couch, and then the, his wife will walk um under the doorway, and then he takes a pellet gun, he shoots the balloon, the balloon explodes, and then all the shaving cream lands all over his wife, and they do these together where she'll like. They have pellet guns and they 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 just have balloons planted all over their homes and they 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 get very creative. Whenever she does it, she like shoots a pellet gun. The 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 shaving cream goes and then she does a confetti cannon. So he's covered in confetti. It is like it is. I mean, it's like too much to clean up. And but then it's shaving very cream goes funny. all over the house. I mean, wherever they're standing, I don't. It's not. It's not. It's not a shaving cream grenade. It's just like a little. <laughs> little I'll tell you a, a real, little balloon balls. Am I clipping? Um, I'll tell you, uh, I it was October, since it's nearly October, just Halloween just passed, and um, Thriller came out. This was a very long time ago. Thriller by Michael Jackson, the music video came out. Thank you. And- Cause I, I, th- I thought you meant Thriller by um, Ariana Grande for a second. <laughs> thriller by Michael Shut Jackson. Um, and... For the there might be plenty of people who have not seen the video. I've never seen Michael the video. Johnson. I don't. I don't. What you're Shut lying. Up. Monet's you're lying. Monet's lying. lying. Monet's doing a bit. Monet's doing a bit. There is no I'm way really you've not seen Thriller. Ne- I'm from you the are 90s. Black. I'm from the. I'm from. I'm born in '90. Girl, this music video was the most popular music video and through the '90s. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I would say yeah. <laughs> Because BET used to every year do a countdown of the, of, the, of the top music videos, and every year Thriller was number one. Then one Thriller year was one. it was one year it wasn't Thriller because the video you watched you would you would watch this countdown the top one hundred music videos of all time, and then one time Thriller was number two, and 
everybody People was freaking out. Minds. And number one was um, Scream. <laughs> Janet Jackson, Jackson Michael Jackson Scream. Oh. Um, anyway, the video had come out and it's a uh, zombie flick. It's like a mini f- short film. Um, and we watched it and it, scared, it was scary to me. And my, um, I was be- I was with my babysitter. Her name was Sherelle. And we watched the video and it was time for me to go to bed. And she's like, okay, go into the bathroom, brush your teeth, do what you need to do. And then you'll go to bed. And so I was in the bathroom, brushing my teeth, doing whatever, getting ready. And all of a sudden I heard a noise and I was like, oh no. And I opened the door. What kind of noise? Like a a knock or a howl or a a scratch? or a thump. A thump. And then I opened the door and I was like, Sherelle, Sherelle, Sherelle. And she did not answer. And then all of a sudden I hear these footsteps real slow. And I was like, what's going on? And I start to go out. And just as I start to go out down the hall, Sherelle turns the corner and she's like, like a zombie (laughs) coming towards me. And I was like four, five. So she was scared the hell out of me and she did not give it up. And I like was, it was straight up out of the the the, vid- the music video. And I was like backing up and I was like, no. And I was like crying. I was really traumatized. I thought she was going to get me and I thought something happened to her and I was so scared. But she, and she came like right up to me and then she started laughing. Oh, it's exactly good. what Michael Jackson basically does in that's the music video. That's a fun video. babysitter. No, she was terrible. She, she, she never, she never, Don't do it. It scared me. I still get like heart palpitations. Oh God. That sounds, no, that sounds, I I was a very, I, I, the movie Ghost scared me. That was a scary movie for me as a child. I was scary. Well, listen, y'all. I think we are. No, no, no. I said, well, listen. Guys, we have reached the end of our time with our. Because I said so. Honorary sibling, Peppermint. Because I. Because I proclaimed it. Make sure y'all go to Peppermint Online now and get tickets to to uh well the t- the tour is called the Lovers is is it is it called Letters to My Lovers Tour? It's not. <clears throat> it's, the it's called Lovers Live because Lovers I'm Live. so um uh inspired by Sade. She had a uh, her album was called uh uh Lovers Rock, and then the tour was called Lovers Live. So that's just my little paying homage to Sade. So that t- album is Letters to My Lovers, but the tour, tour is, lovers, is live. lovers Live. So make sure you go to Peppermint Online, get tickets to Lovers Live to see Peppermint and Juju be live in your town, darling, for some true R&B singing. And I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be at the LA show. I bought my tickets, and I'll see y'all there. Finally. Was good. I love you so much, <laughs> Pep. I, I love, love you that. very much, Miss Man. And Monet, I, we've, shared, I, we've shared notes. Yeah. <laughs> 